Welcome back to the farm. Did you miss your weekly update last week? Yeah. How hey, things got a little bit hectic. I did myself a bit of damage and managed to kick a concrete wobble with my little toe, so that took up some time. Got kind of busy with a few things. Uh, some of them I'm going to show you today. Had some uh, family come and visit. So unfortunately, uploading to YouTube just didn't happen. Tried. I tried. And now, in the end, I messed up filming it too, which didn't help. I managed to zoom in on something and then I uh, forgot to zoom out, which left... Uh, I mean, all my footage was unusable. So coming out, shooting it again, and as you appreciate how much time I put into filming these episodes. So sorry about that, folks. You missed out on a weekly update last week. Well, I'll make it up to you this week. Let's have a look, quick look around the farm. Let's have a look at the things that have changed, first of all. Now, here's the big, uh, one of the major changes. The corn, it's all gone. We've got the trickle tape pulled out, we've got it ploughed up. We've got the tractor at the moment, it's working. Uh, you see we've had plenty of field work done here. This one uh, is actually been uh, planted. We have peanuts in here. It's about a rye. This is near as I can figure it, of peanuts here. So there's the block of peanuts being planted. Got uh, my auntie, a couple of cousins, uh, nieces, stepson, and bomb all going at it. And uh, you see uh, boys running through putting in uh, holes. Girls going through, dropping peanuts in the holes, and then uh, backfilling them. And Bob's going through putting some fertiliser on. There they go. Long next to it will be all peanuts too. Where the tractor is at the moment, he's just putting in what what we in Australia would call a headland, which is basically a track on a farm that you can drive down. And now, because it's a bit unusual, I like to have places to drive on the farm. Ties don't quite get it because you could be planting this. Just not that hungry. So we've got a road here. We're going to have a road going off here straight across to the trees. And that means that when I want to do something, if I want to go and have a look at the, what's happening down the other end of the block, I can just drive there. I don't have to bloody walk there. So that's what's going on there. We've got uh, where the plan is. These are peanuts. The block next to it is going to be peanuts. Not sure what we're doing with this corn at the moment because uh, where the corn was, that's been ploughed over. But as you can see, you know, it had plenty of weeds growing up through it. it uh, that's what happens when you improve the pasture. But, uh, so that's been ploughed. I believe the pumpkins are gone as well at the other end there. We harvested the pumpkins. There was stuff all. We got nearly... Uh, I think it was about 20 kilos of pumpkins is all we got off the corn. This corn was a success. We had about uh, about 300 kilos of uh, corn, of saleable corn. We had another 20 or 30 kilos that the family ate while was eating. We've got, uh, we've kept some of it. Uh, we've kept about 20 kilos, 20, 30 kilos for seed. Uh, which is drying at the moment, so we've got to put, put uh, the same variety back in again, theoretically. Hopefully it'll grow. And then uh, we had another about 20-30 uh, kilo of uh, 
uh, cobs that didn't develop properly or uh, something had eaten uh, and that went to uh, animal feed. These two blocks which were peanuts leased ground we are going to put corn into. So this is the other change we've had uh, the corn that where this corn was is now peanuts as well they're planted. Uh, we have uh, hopefully by the end of the day but more likely by the end of tomorrow or possibly Thursday, Friday, by the weekend, we will have trickle tape on these uh, peanuts. So they will be able to be watered as and when I want. And try and get away from this. Oh, we can hand water it because I don't like doing that because that wastes time. It's no point having someone holding a hose when it can be running by itself. This is the bamboo. They have a look. We've got a uh, got a second fishing rod growing here. So that's. Uh, that's a new one. That's uh, that was a wow. A week ago it was about this big, so it's doubled its size in a week. But uh, that's two weeks. And you can see, if you have a look down here, they are growing from down here in the ground. They are actually shoots. So that's good. That is not the original plants growing. That that's actual shoots. This is the one that we planted just recently, and as you can see, this has bamboo shoots shooting up everywhere we planted it was a shoot when we planted it did have some roots on uh, so that one's taking off at a million miles an hour which is fantastic this one is our old trusty one that's still still doing well still doing well on top it hasn't thrown any shoots yet but with this much growth on the top it's got to be doing all right under the ground same with this one, this was, uh, what was this was second planting, so those, the first one, the third one were the first planting, this was the second planting, so this one's doing okay too, uh, doesn't have shoots yet coming from the ground, still has foliage growing on the top which is good. As long as this foliage is growing that means that the, the roots are taking up water and nutrients so that means that we are have surviving plants these will live and that's fantastic and of course the shoot was a third planting that was one we took out because it was uh, dead and we've replaced it with that one so that's good as you can see the only farm auntie's farm has been well and truly worked up this is uh, getting ready for planting I believe with sugarcane and it looks like the sugarcane is going to be coming right up to our boundary which is fantastic, oh, I love that. But anyway, these trees I'd like to get rid of and continue our road basically straight up beside our, our blocks. He's been through here and he's got a got the road oh, pretty smooth. I mean, yeah, it should be better, but yeah, it's not going to be. That's, that's as good as I'm going to get at the moment. So. That's what's happening there. I told you the peanuts there are in. You see the makua here, the eggplants. They're uh, they're all getting flowers and fruits. They are doing okay. They're getting a bit of height to them. These this is the second planting up this way. Uh, this is the first planting down this way. And you can see, uh, you see in there, there's a bit of a fruit uh, somewhere in there. Oh, look at that, there's a fruit. There's a macaw. Fantastic. And they, you see there's got flowers all over it. Fantastic. Flowers and fruit, flowers and fruit. That's what we love. Yeah, look at all the fruits on those. There they are. Yeah, more fruits. Uh, we should be starting to get uh, another week or so we'll get saleable harvest off, off those. Uh, we've had a few. We've had a I had about five kilos in total off them so far, but you know, like in patchy bits, so it's all gone to the family. The families enjoy them immensely. We've got a couple of pineapples in here still, they're just about ready for planting out. Uh, the lime trees, all still putting on good growth. Putting on good growth. Remember these lime trees, these are only one year old lime trees, so getting fruit off them is a bonus. And probably by rights I should be pulling the flowers off and stopping them from fruiting but you know they're getting new fresh growth 
we do get some bugs come through and have a bit of a nibble on the leaves uh, but not too bad everything's getting new growth and looking good the holopath still needs cutting so does the, ci the uh, citrus basil still needs cutting the gamagon or dragon fruit are all still doing well these ones if you recall first one up to this hydrant up here this was the first planting of them and you can see they're all they, well they're getting close to the top of the post there's a couple who have breached the top of the post as they get over the top of the post we put in the uh, three pieces of uh, Rio bar with a motorcycle tyre wired onto the top of them they will then rest over that tyre and hang down and grow fruits which will be exactly perfect but you see they're all doing well and uh, once we get past this hydrant these are all the new ones and you see some of them are doing extremely well too and making their ways up the post doing nicely so we've got a fair few of those in the fruit trees are still doing fruit tree things they are first year fruit trees they're not likely to have fruit on them this year or probably next year either we've got uh, papayas the papayas are still they're all surviving now the ones that are surviving we've got one there that's yeah I don't, oh, yeah. What's, what's this one doing uh, don't know he doesn't want to die but he's not living real well but everything else is you know they're surviving at least this one's uh, doing okay he's got some flowers flowers happening there and I think this one in here has some flowers starting to happen in there too which is great so they're all good the chili plants they're all doing okay these ones aren't showing much fruit they're showing them I don't know what's happening they're not looking actually some of them are looking quite sick they got flowers on them some of them some of them haven't looks like we've got a couple of different varieties mixed in with those but uh, you know, like this one's not looking so healthy I'm not sure what's going on with them but when we get down here these ones thousands of flowers lots of flowers lots of fruits we're starting to get red ones as you can see some red chili, red, some colouring, We're starting to get some chili showing. Chili on the ground there, but uh, as you can see, that's starting to do quite well. We'll start harvesting those this week, which will be fantastic. The lemongrass is still doing lemongrass thing. Look how thick these bunches of lemongrass are getting. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's thick enough if you wanted to, you could uh, start halving them and set, splitting them up and making even more lemongrass, but I think we've got enough lemongrass here. Uh, the glangle, there's a couple of extra shoots shooting up from under the ground, which is good, which means that the, the uh, plant underneath of the root, which is what you're growing, the rhizome, is uh, getting, uh, getting bigger. The pepper plant is alive. Can't say much more for it than that. It's alive. It's alive. You can see the, the termites have been at that stick there. Uh, this finger root or uh, crechai it's doing okay. Needs a bit of weeding. Get someone onto that. This is the pakwan. Pakwan. I don't know what it is. It's a Thai herb. Uh, they like to eat. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Apparently, it's good. Uh, so, and that's pretty much it for the existing plants. That's what we've got going on so far with the plants. Like I said, fruit trees are doing some fruit tree things there. You see, there's bright green leaves and new growth on all these, all of these plants. Yeah. 
Beautiful new leaves there. Very easy to see. New growth, it's doing good. So, everything is surviving at least. Some of it's doing better than surviving. And uh, so that's a good start. Let's go and have a look at the aquaponics. This is where the work's been going on. So here we have the aquaponics. Finally, we've got the tank in place. We have the tank in place, we have it plumbed in. We have, this will be the water delivery, this is the water outflow. The water outflow goes through these two filters. This filter is simply a radial flow type filter. So what happens is water comes in here. It's, because it's inside this pipe, it means the water has to go down to the bottom when it comes in. And then it flows out the other side. Now, because it does this, it slows the water down, causes most of the solids to fall out. You know, like the fancy lid, we use a piece of plastic to cut out the top of the tank. Then it flows into this tank. This is a simple filter. This pipe goes down to the bottom of the tank. It has uh, a cross piece which has slots cut in it, so the water has to come up through the tank, through this uh, sunscreen, sun cloth, shade cloth, which is loosely packed in there. We probably need a bit more in there, but at the moment this is enough. So this should, uh, and it will stop any any solids that make it out of the radial flow filter. It will stop them going any further than here. Then we get a pipe that essentially has slots cut in it, so it will take water, goes out straight into the return sump. Again, fancy lid, if you cut them just right, they sit back on upside down nicely. Here's a tip for you, young players. This is the sump tank. This is now almost finished. You just need to clean that last little bit of uh, gunk out of the bottom. Clean out those damn frogs that keep jumping in there. And then uh, that's ready to go. All these media beds are now plumbed in. They have water going to them. They are not outflow pumped at the moment. So that will be the task for today. As we need to get in under here. And all these outlets need to go back to this pipe. In the, this uh, four inch pipe. Uh, and that's just a simple, simply a matter of drilling the hole and uh, aiming a, pot, a bit of pipe coming out of the bottom into them. That means that we have everything is just about set, ready to go. Over there we have a tray of uh, tomatoes. They will be going into these media beds. Now these media beds, because, because it's aquaponics, because you're supplying the nutrients to them, you can pl plant them a lot denser than what you can in the ground. Uh, you'd, you'd normally want a, a decent spacing on your tomatoes, about uh, nearly uh, about 50 centimetres to 75 centimetres at least for your tomatoes. In media beds, you, you can halve that because the, the roots aren't competing for nutrients. The nutrients are supplied to them. The roots don't compete. In the pipes, we will have uh, salad type you know like leafy greens so like your lettuce like your lettuces and uh, uh, cabbages that sort of thing and we have them sprouting here and here and here and here and we've got way too many planted but uh, that doesn't matter at least I've got them in the ground so we have we will have enough to fire up the system and get plants into it. We have uh, a fish tank. We have everything, just about everything we need for all systems to be go. It will be systems go before the weekend. Hopefully today we will get this cleaned out and uh, finish the cleaning out of this and we'll be able to put, start putting water into the system. Of course it goes into here. Then we can start a uh, start firing the system up now. Before uh, to get to get everything working properly, uh, we will fire it up without fish. So we will have water, 
but we'll put fish food in to get nitrogen into the system. The nitrogen turns into ammonia. The ammonia will cause the bacterial colonies to start in the in the media beds and well anywhere wet where you've got wet media basically and enough oxygen. So we will get the bacteria, the nitrifying bacteria. There's two types of nitrifying bacteria. There's one that uh, converts the ammonia to nitrite and then there's another one that uh, converts the nitrite to nitrate. The nitrate is mostly harmless to the fish and is uh, available for plant, plant uptake. And that's what the aim of the whole system is. Now they, these bacteria are actually ever present. Uh, you provide a wet environment a wet oxygenated environment for them to survive in and they will populate so that will populate the media yeah. and everything is a go but we've been as you can see we've got a lot done in the last two weeks which is why you didn't get an update last week that and uh, me trying to break my toe I'll show you but looking at my feet it's pretty disgusting it's uh, well and truly swollen up at a couple of days where I couldn't walk on it at all. And that, I reckon that's about your update for the week. As you can see, we've got plenty of dragonflies floating around here. Must be an organic farm, eh? With all these dragonflies. But, uh, my coconut down there still hasn't Still hasn't died that silly coconut, coconut that. Uh, yeah, look at this. Now I'm zooming in. If I, as long as I don't forget to zoom out again, Th that one that's just the stick stuck in the ground and it's still growing, still alive. Don't know why. But we've also had guests, and uh, the uh, village water has been off for the last two weeks nearly. So we've got the, the lads filling up the tank there, taking another load of water home. And uh, been running water around a bit. Plenty of water going home. We had, uh, at one stage, we had eight women in the house. And seemed, to, seemed to be plenty of water getting used then. So that's your update for this week. Yeah, for the last fortnight, really. It's brought you pretty much up to date. That's how we're going. Things are looking up. We've got beautiful sunshine again. Got a little bit of wind, but everything's everything's coming up roses. And that's... So that's your update for the week. Thanks very much for everyone that's been subscribing and uh, watching the videos. Uh, we've got. Uh, Got getting the views that are getting right up there now. Over a thousand views on the videos so far. Uh, I think we're up to nearly 70 subscribers. Uh, don't forget to, uh, you know, like if you like my videos, if you know anyone that'd be interested in them, you know, like this is just what I'm doing here in Thailand. Uh, be sure to share it on your Facebook, on your on your Twitter. Wherever else you share stuff, share it with your friends, and uh, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Leave a comment. Comments are great. If you've got questions? Ask it in the comments section. I answer them. Uh, and uh, thanks very much, everyone, for uh, subscribing, sharing, and liking so far. Uh, keep up the good work, people. You'll make this channel laugh. You'll make me famous yet. See you later.